Here, let me see. Let me see if I. Writing? Yeah, they do a writing class, and uh, <laughs> most of the students studied um, writing number one for January, February, and March. Now this is writing number two. So the students who are doing writing to have become really advanced. So their stories are becoming more and more funny, more and more interesting. Here, let me see if I can find the one sample of a story by a boy named John. <laughs> so very, there are some very funny boys in this class. And uh, let me see, where is that? Here's a, here's a John story, if you wanna see. John from Hanoi. Okay. Here. My classmates are talking about the world's longest word in the world. What is the longest word in the world? One student says, I think the longest word in the world is honorificable something. I can't even say that, Tane, you know. Um, another says, no, it's anti-disestablishmentarianism. Another says, pseudo hyperthyroidism. There's long, I understand that one. Uh, pseudo pseudo hyper parathyroid, you know, a thyroid condition, but it's fake, suicidal. Then another piped in, it's super cadrafragilistic espialidocious, which comes from the Mary Poppin musical film about 60 years ago. The class leader is going crazy. He says, ask John, I've just passed his table and he is writing a super long word. They all go and ask John. John says, it's pneumono ultra microscopic silico volcano neosis. It, what this is, uh, Tane, it's a lung disorder that a British doctor wrote this. And these three boys love this word. Last class in January, February, when I first started teaching them, they would say this all the time. I mean, they loved this word. <laughs> I just, I just say, go ahead, just keep talking about that word, you know, and they, you know, they assured me, they said, this is a true word teacher, you know. This, this don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't it exist? Yeah, it's a lung uh, disease. It was, um, what does that mean? Um, it's a, I, I think it's an irritant because it has volcaniosis, but it could also be that the sputum erupts like a volcano. It's such a serious lung disorder that it could the sputum could come flying out of the person's mouth you know yeah, we yeah. have you know it, it's kind of gross but um, yucky uh, <laughs> hey let me run this through i'm gonna run this through the google and and yeah. see what they say you know we have I'm to search in it as well <laughs> are also yeah let's find out what this really intelligent boy introduced it to them hey they really admire this one 12 year old boy. He's like a genius. Um, and uh, I, actually that, that genius boy, he's sometimes dangerous to call on because he speaks to me like uh, a extremely intelligent. Uh... Yeah, okay, so it's, it's not that the sputum, yeah, I found it, it's interesting. I think you maybe found the same thing. It's from um, inhaling very fine ash. I don't know if that's um, in a natural environment or a work environment. It's probably a serious thing. Uh, it's an inventive long word said to mean uh, a lung disease caused by inhaling very fine ash and dust. Um, origin, the 1930s a word in probably invented by Everett M. Smith, president of the National Puzzlers League in imitation. Oh, you know what? This is a fantasy, Tane. This isn't even a real word. He invented this as part of a contest and all the words make sense, but I don't know if doctors actually recognize this as a real, you know, <laughs> sickness. The guy who invented it, Everett M. Smith, maybe was just playing word games. So let's see, Oxford Dictionary says, a name that has been invented for a lung disease caused by breathing in very small pieces of ash or dust. The longest word in English, according to Oxford English Dictionary, is that word. Um, a chronic lung disease caused by the inhalation of fine silicate or quartz dust. Silicate would be industrial. Quartz is maybe mining, people who go deep in the ground to go mining. Hmm. You know what I'd like to do is get a pronunciation on this. 
Let's see what they say. Numino ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. <laughs> and they love to say it. The three students love to say this over and over. So we'll learn to pronounce. Oh, by the way, you know this on um, Google, right? The slow style pronounce. Uh, so let's see if we can. Numino ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. <laughs> That's only here about volcanoes. <laughs> I know, you're just volcano. <laughs> I guess silicate and ash comes from a volcano. Um, Tane, do you use this uh, Google app? Um, I usually use all dictionary to to hear pronunciation. Yeah. So you just um, you can watch videos of our class, right? So What's sometimes. You know, sometimes I speak too quickly, but if I speak slower, it's good for pronunciation, you know. Let me see how to pronounce. Let's pick something easier, Tane. How to pronounce uh, a word like ambition. Let's say ambitious. That would be more challenging for students. Ambitious and see how if it does slowly. Ambitious. Ambitious. <laughs> ambitious. Ambitious. Yeah, ambitious. There it is. One more time. Ambitious. Ambitious. That's actually a really ambitious. good one. Ambitious. Yeah, so there you go. So, Tane, um, we're waiting for the other students. How are you doing tonight? If they don't show up, please do a half an hour conversation with me, okay? <laughs> because I'll be oh, lonely. Oh, one oh, more. Here comes, here comes Ha. Good for Ha. One more. <laughs> Now you're not all alone and you don't have to speak yeah. for 25 minutes because I'm going to be asking you questions about, you know, school psychology, you know. The last time I really seriously did that was 24 at least, years ago. Yeah. yeah, at least you remember my job about the school psychologist. Yeah. Hello, Tia. Yeah. <laughs> we are happy that you are here. Yeah, because we're, we're doing Hello, school Dr. psychology. Thanks to see you, huh? Great to see you. We are we're laughing. I'm doing, we're actually having a fun time, Tane and I talking about school psychology uh, because the last time I studied that was 24 years ago. So Tane brings back these memories and uh, another teacher in Taiwan last year also brought back those old memories of working with kids with various disorders or problems, you know. So anyway, ha, how are you? Uh, fine. Yeah, uh, after I have a dinner with my family, I yeah. ride so fast. Yeah. To back home uh -huh. and enjoy our class. Thank you. How, was it on bicycle you rode back? Hmm? Was it by? You said rode back. Was it motorcycle or bicycle? Uh, a motorcycle. A motorcycle. Okay. What do you, do you have? A scooter or a real motorbike? Uh, I can hear you. Well, scooters are those smaller ones. And so we say scooter by Honda. I'll put yeah, it in yeah, the chat. I, I, I understand scooter. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, then, it's, uh, uh, I mean, a small gap. We can yeah. use a scooter. But, uh, you know, in Ho Chi Minh City, we, we have a lot of motorcycle and mm. traffic jam all the time. Mm. And I think motorcycle is the best uh, transportation we choose. Do you ride, so you ride a motorbike, uh, huh? Um, yep. Oh, very cool. Uh, what is it? Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha? Uh, Honda. Oh, Honda, yeah. I'm laughing because, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, Honda is a, a well-known brand in Vietnam. Yeah, oh, yeah. Long time. <laughs> um, here I'll put in chat. In 2000, 24 years ago, I was teaching um, some businessmen, Japanese businessmen in Chicago, and they had just opened a Ho Chi Minh City branch for their company. And the, my friend Shuji said, oh, our salesman keeps having, he, he has a Honda Cub a scooter for his sales work, and they keep stealing it. In Ho Chi Minh City, there were scooter yeah. thieves who kept stealing the Hondas. And he mm -hmm. said, I, the company keeps paying for a new one, but they're really getting tired of it. He had like six Hondas stolen because it was so popular in Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. yeah. In Vietnam, not only Ho Chi Minh City. All over Vietnam, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and um, let me show you, my brother had a 1970s Honda Cub. And so let me uh, just get a picture of that uh, for the Honda Cub in um, Yahoo Images. I always use Yahoo Images because they're the easiest to use. And so it was a 1970s Honda Cub. And uh, my brother was pretty reckless on this. Yeah, I love these old Honda Cubs. These things, um, I think, maybe are kind of expensive now. I mean, Honda made millions of these about 40 yeah. years ago. Yeah. I see that because in 1990, uh, yeah, 1990s. my family has one. Yeah. And then... In Southeast Asia, Taiwan, you can do mother, father, and one of the children here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Three members. Still in Vietnam. Yeah. No, in Vietnam, maybe we four or five. It's okay. Oh, four or five. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, what I liked. Do you see this? Um, here's one that I always saw in Taipei. It was dogs on scooters in Taipei. And this one really made me laugh because sometimes the dogs would fight with each other. Um, if they mm -hmm. were in the traffic. So you would see this, a big retriever on the scooter. And then if the other person comes up to them and they both have dogs, the dogs start fighting as they wait for the signal. Um, can you put dogs on scooters in Vietnam? Uh, yeah, yeah, the same. Yeah. Is it safe or? Mm, I don't know. I have no idea. But in my opinion, because I don't have any pets yeah. uh, in my apartment, and yeah. I think if uh, a, a dog or a cat, uh, yeah. Yeah. no, uh, I mean, mm, mm, no protect, but mm, yeah. Just, yeah. just stand up here. Yeah. Maybe sometimes uh, down, they yeah. Yeah, push that. They could get really it's injured. Like a, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Injure an accident for the yeah. other. I was happy to see them. They were beautiful animals, but I became nervous, Ha and uh, Tain. I thought, is this safe yeah. for the poor dog? And this is an older dog. You can see its face is turning white. So, yeah, he, yeah. You know, he can't really, if she fell on the scooter, the dog would have to run out, but then it would maybe be hit by another scooter. So, I, sometimes I didn't like to see that. By the way, in Vietnam, do you have to wear a helmet, mandatory helmet safety? That's either regulation from government. Yeah, okay. Um, because one of my students wrote me a story here. You're a writing class, and so we have a junior writing class. I use almost the same as you um, for your class, but um, I change it a little bit um, for the, this is writing class number two basic writing, but it's it's meant for primary um, school students. So someone wrote a thing here. Let me see a newspaper story, if this is the right one. Yeah, ah, here it is. I found it. We have a really um, intelligent student named Alice. And let me see. Um, I told the students to pick a school issue that they feel um, the school should know about, right? And uh, hey, Tane, do you want to read this one? That Alice, she's only 12 years old and she wrote this. And this gives you a chance to read. Would you like to read this? We'll give it to Tane. Me? Okay. Do you ask me to read? Yeah, do you want to read? Because okay. then this way you yeah. get a chance to read and it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Serious problem. Uh -huh. uh, a few students do not obey the school rules, uh, especially wearing a helmet when in traffic. Uh -huh. The school principal already talked about this problem, but some unknown uh, students forgot and got caught by the principal. She even remember their transport lion plate. <laughs> yeah. um, the principal caught a gun because she was not wearing the required helmet. The security guard reported to the principal that another gun did not obey uh, the rules, which has mentioned, which has mentioned by principal. Uh, actually, that uh, should be that, which had been. That. Which had been mentioned yeah. by the principal. This says a 
fundamental problem and teachers do know do not know why it has been getting worse nowadays students often use tricks to get past the security i have seen that a lot um uh, teachers need to help students understand the benefits of changing helmet while riding. Yeah. So I always tell the younger students and the adult students that if you write a critical piece about something that needs to change, that you should put in a, a suggestion for improvement, because that's what they do in academic papers. You know, you describe a problem, but then you say suggestions for improvement. So little Ellis already knows how to do that. It's amazing. And as you can see from her writing, I only corrected maybe six or seven things here. Actually, Tim, when you were reading, I realized she missed that bin. I have to tell her I forgot to correct her paper about that. Yeah. And so, of course, I wrote very good opinion piece, Ellis. And I only added a few corrections, specifically wearing a helmet was my idea. What do you think, Tane, of that topic? Um, is it, I think it's fun. <laughs> yeah. So is, it a, is it a problem, kids not wearing their safety helmets if they're on a bicycle to go to school? It's not very strict in Hanoi. Yeah. When, uh, okay, you need to wear helmet, but yeah. not like, not really need to have a high quality of oh. helmet. Yeah. Oh no! You you know this kind of uh the helmet is it, it not full it not kind of full face. It's yeah, a yeah. it's a like kind of a cap. The, oh yeah, the cap helmets. Yeah. Yeah. It Let look it look like the uh, cap. Yeah, like a cap. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, skull cap. Uh, motorcycle helmet. Yeah. Uh, these are popular in Japan, too. I don't know if the police are going to let them use these. Um, let me stop this share, and then I'll show you what I got on Google. Oh, we have more students. <laughs> oh, I know. We see Trong Ta. Hey, Trong Ta. Thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, Trong Ta, we're warming up talking about school safety and uh, students who write newspaper stories. I'm trying to encourage my younger students to write newspaper stories. But I don't know if we did that in this class. We didn't do like a newspaper story. We could do a letter to an editor of a newspaper. That would be good. But tonight we're going to do a uh, letter to a friend, a, a nice letter to a friend or family member you haven't seen in a long time. So I think these are the ones right here, right? This no, no, I think this one, maybe I can send the link. Yeah. I mean, this, I don't know if this is so good because there's no protection here, you know, and there's, this is good protection, but you also need a little bit more here and a little more here. So it's not quite a proper motorcycle helmet. Ha, huh, what do you think? Is this a good enough motorcycle helmet? I think it's uh, enough. Yeah. Enough. Yeah, it's enough. Um, I think, um, um helmet uh using helmet when uh, he uh ride a motorcycle is uh, not new topic yeah but um a lot of people in vietnam uh, they uh not force uh i mean uh, not follow the rules the regulation uh, and they yeah we have uh, punishment from the government. Uh -huh. We have uh, a yeah. lot of policy in the school. Yeah. But uh, I think it depends on uh, the people in uh, opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people uh, like me, I think the helmet protect, uh, protect my head uh, injure. Uh, yeah, if I were injured. Uh, and I think it's uh, very important um, and I will choose uh, a good uh, branch. Mm. Uh, and uh, some people think it's not really uh, important oh, or significant, no. something like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they yeah. use uh, a cheap uh, helmet. Uh, yeah. and, uh, I mean, uh, uh, cannot oh. protect uh, their head 
or something like that. Yeah. This is and I think this is uh on the on the, this is a uh, rule, huh? but uh it depends uh, our yeah, opinion. Mm. I used to walk past a motorcycle helmet store in Taipei in the neighborhood I lived in. And I noticed even the children's helmets that had cute Hello Kitty, you know, pink helmets. I looked inside them because they had a big window showing all the helmets and it looked like pretty good protection even for children. Um, so I think they had like, they were really strict about it because the Taipei police are kind of cool. You know, they, Taipei is a rich city. They have a lot of money. So they have these young guys on motorcycles, they're police officers, and they were always catching um, people without helmets. I saw them catch an old man once and uh, they were very strict about that. Said, come on over to the side. And I think they gave them expensive traffic fines for not doing that. Let me check with Trong Ta. Trong Ta, are you there? I want to see if your connection's okay. Hello, Ta. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm here. How are you today? Uh, <laughs> You're sleepy. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's okay. We're just doing a slow warm up to start today's class because we're waiting for more members to come. It's our final mm -hmm. uh, thing. Um, and oh, I see you have a thing there um, from you, a link for everyone. Thank you, Tom. Okay, uh, Tain. All right. So um, tonight we'll go into the topic now. Um, it's a friendly letter. And so I created two samples of one kind of letter. And then another one, let me just get my thing here ready. And it's a friendly letter. And let's see, would you like to read somebody? Because then you get a chance to speak and read. Uh, I wrote, this is a topic, a nice topic to end our 10 week session uh, with, I have many friends around the world. I would like to choose two friends who I met in Saudi Arabia. There is Phil Jones, a veteran English teacher of at least 25 years. Uh, and the other person is one of my students named Noah al Khader. In, in Arabic, it's al Khader, who was one of my favorite students of all time. Here are some items I want to include in my letters. So let's see, um, Tain, can you read, uh, if, you, if you could read one to seven, if it's not too much reading? Yeah. Okay. Uh, greeting start. Letter with a warm greeting. Of course, mention the friend by name. Two, opening, express how much you miss them and acknowledge the time that has passed since your last meeting or communication. Three, update, um, share some updates about your life since you last saw each other. Highlight significant event, achievements, or experience. Four, inquire. Ask about your friend's life and experience. So generous interest in their well-being, uh, activities, and any news they may have. Five memories, recall fun. Yeah, fun. Fun means like warm, good feeling memories. Fun. Okay. We may recall fun memories or experience you share together. This helps strength, strengthen your bond and reminds your friend of the special moment you will have. Uh, six, plans. Mention any plans or ideas you have uh, uh, for, for getting together in the future. Mm -hmm. Spread your design to connect and spend time together again. Seven, closing. And your letter with a warm closing. Success, expressing your anticipation of hearing back from them soon or sending them your best wishes. Very good. Um, I found that word um, fond because I think that's an important one. It can be used in different contexts in different ways. I, I found fond memories. It sounds like this. Fond memories. Fond memories. She speaks so fast. And then, <laughs> what do you think, Tan? Is it a good, good translation? Yes. Uh, nice memories. Yeah, nice memories. Fond memories. Very good. Okay. It's a good one to learn fun. But 
Um, it can also have this though. Um, I am fond of that girl. It also has this meaning too though. I am fond means I like Tôi thích cô gái đó. You know, I am fond of that girl. So two different fond meanings. Fond memories are pleasant memories, but then pleasant memories can be for another person that you really like. Yeah. Is it like? Like. It's like, yeah. yeah. Likeable, yeah. enjoyable, but nice feeling inside. Fond. Yeah, it's a nice word. It just sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see the friendly letter. Um, so let me start with what I wrote for my friend Phil. I tried to color code this with red for number ones, greens for number two or uh, six. Um, purples are updates, blues are inquiry, and brown is memory. I feel like maybe I should have done this more throughout the course. <laughs> Now It's our last night and I just remembered to color code all the parts. I think I should do that more often. So Phil, P-H-I-L, he's from um, England, Southern England. I hope this letter finds you well in Baghdad in Iraq. I'm doing fine in Hiroshima. Thanks for your WhatsApp message last week. Uh, it was great to hear from you. The weather in Western Japan for the most part is pretty good with some nice spring flowers in our neighborhood. I am able to take long walks again on warm sunny days. I was a little concerned to see on the news that a military base near Baghdad was bombed. Uh, when I see these stories, I become worried for your personal safety. Actually, it was a military base. Um, Does the British University there have a contingency plan to help you if the violence increases? I hope so. Um, I was taking a long walk the other day and I remembered sharing car rides into the town of Alasa with you, Wes and Toussaint. In a short space of time, the summer of 2022, we had some very good times together. You know what my favorite restaurant in El Hasa is, Burger Fuel, the place owned by those friendly guys from India. They made good hamburgers. I especially miss the uh, sunsets in Alasa when we would drive back in the late afternoons from shopping at the Alasa Mall. I know it was only two years ago, but it was kind of a magic time being in such a strange desert place. Anyway, thank you for staying in touch the last two years. I miss you, Wes and Tucson. I hope we can have a reunion maybe in London in the future. Take care and be safe. No doubt I will hear from you again soon on WhatsApp. Until then, best wishes, Brendan. So let me show you the map where we were because it's a little bit difficult to the, that's uh, Saudi Arabia and that's the capital uh, Riyadh. This is the big Eastern province and our little town of only maybe 40,000 people was al -Assa. So you fly into Dammam from another Arab country or from Europe and then it's 90 minutes by bus to al -Assa. So it's deep, really desert country Um, people ask me if I saw a camel, and once I saw three camels after this heavy rain, the camels came out to eat uh, uh, green grass, even though it was the desert, all this green grass came. So these are my friends. Uh, my, our friend Wes is still here, but uh, Phil moved north into Iraq to teach at the British University there. So these are some of my best friends. Okay, so that's... Uh, number one for Phil. Then I wrote this one. This one is called a congratulations style letter. And this can be for a niece or a nephew who's finishing primary or secondary school. Some of my students who are 18 years old mentioned that in Vietnam, they're finishing their final exams right now, their final tests. So if you, one uh, student, her name is also Ha, uh, she said she felt she did very well in English. Um, the two subjects she did very well. But in the other two, she isn't sure if her grade was good. So congratulations style would be a nice letter for someone who is completing um, high school tests or graduation. So this is a guy, his name is Noah. His grandfather was from Somalia, but he moved to Saudi Arabia. So Noah is very African looking um, guy. Um, and he was just a very funny kid. He loves soccer or British football. And so I had really funny memories. He wore this big ring, a big brown stone, and he used to hit the table with it when he was bored. And it was noisy, but he was also a very funny guy, Noah. 
So I write, Dear Noah, how are you doing? I'm enjoying some nice long days in spring in Japan. I'm writing to congratulate you on your graduation from the National Training Institute, or NIDI. You were one of my favorite students at the Institute, and I really enjoyed teaching all you guys. When you complete the course this coming July, will you stay in Alasa or will you return to Damam City to be closer to your family? You will no doubt stay with Hyundai Company. Will you work on the seacoast or out on the Arabian Gulf? I'm sure your family will be very proud of all that you have accomplished. I hope you find the petroleum industry uh, work industry. He's going to work in the oil fields where Saudi Arabia makes all its money. At any rate, I am writing to thank you for your help as a reference in one of the letters of inquiry I wrote to a company which needs online English trainers for their tourism industry staff. The time difference made the work impossible for me to teach because I would have to teach at 1 a.m. and this is my sleeping time. However, your kind words and favorable assessment of my teaching abilities made a very strong impression on the recruitment agency, which really wanted me to take the assignment. Perhaps if the hours are better in the future, I could still contact them to see if work is available. Could you also pass along a thank you to the five Mohammeds? In Saudi Arabia, everyone is called Mohammed. It's like the American name John or Joe. So there are five Mohammeds in one class. Um, Ali Yosef, Abdul Karim, and Basim. You guys all work so well as a class together that I have no doubts you and your classmates will stay together as a highly efficient team and make a name for yourselves at Hyundai. Best of luck and by all means, keep in touch. Best wishes for you and your future, Brendan. So they're all going to graduate from a two-year training program in English, but also working on machines for oil uh, production in Saudi Arabia. And so um, just the map again, Many of the students came from Dammam to the training center, or they came from Riyadh, and they all come from really big families with like uh, 12 brothers and sisters, 20 brothers and sisters. They have these crazy big families, you know, and so that some of them would try to go back to Dammam by car on the weekend or go to Riyadh by car on the weekend. Um, and so they really missed their families and they were at this training institute or school in the desert. Uh, from uh, Sunday to Thursday. Oh, by the way, in Saudi Arabia, there is no Sunday because it's a Muslim country. So their weekend starts on Thursday night and then it finishes Saturday night and they go back to work and school on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that's the schedule. Okay, so would you like to try to write um, for the next 20 minutes or so? Can you think of a friend you would like to write a friendly letter to say like what's happening in your life this one? Or you could write a congratulations letter to someone who's uh, going to graduate soon. I will probably send this to my friend Noah um, so he can, um, you know, congratulate him on his training. So um, do you have any questions for that one? Yeah, I have a question. All right. Huh? You can back to the first letter. Okay. Back to this one here. Yeah. Um, you, the first sentence you write, I have, uh, this letter find you well, uh, it's the same meaning with, uh, I hope you are doing well, right? Okay. Yes, it is, yeah, I hope okay. you're doing well. Good question, huh? Okay. Yeah. It's just, the way I wrote it is a little bit old-fashioned, because Phil, um, went to a really high level university in Britain. He's a very intelligent guy. So I find when I speak to sort of very high university um, teachers from Oxford and Cambridge and the University of London, I use the older style proper English with them and they're comfortable with it. So I hope this letter finds you well in Baghdad, yeah. Okay. And the second is, uh... The, the final sentence you write, no doubt, yeah. what does that mean? Um, no doubt means, I'm, that's a great question too. It means um, I'm certain, I, I'm certain I will uh, hear from you. Do you know I'm certain I will hear from you, huh? Um, mm. Means uh, it's, probably going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. No doubt means yeah. it has different meanings, but like no doubt can be, oh yeah, no doubt means I agree with you. But this is no doubt is I expect to hear from you soon, this kind of thing. So let me show you. Um let's let's actually look at what they do. Uh no doubt I'll hear from you soon. I ran this through the Vietnamese translator because I do enjoy using this. I think sometimes it's good. <laughs> And uh, sometimes students laugh because it's not so good. But this looks pretty good. Let's take a look. All right, so. No doubt, yeah, I'll hear from you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Không còn nghi ngờ gì nữa. Tôi sẽ sớm nhận được phản hồi từ bạn. How good, take good translation? Yeah, it's okay. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. I'm always checking with you students to see if the translation is good. Because last week, the students were laughing and laughing because one of the translations was really strange. Um, ha, you remember that. Were you Last week, you were in my class. It was um, students, I'll put it in chat, who went to uh, Nha Trang had uh, seafood. Yeah, you can see <laughs> Seafood clams, I think it was. Seafood clams, right? And they had yeah. a really strange, the student kept laughing and laughing. She said, Brendan, that sounds so strange, the translation from Google. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to um, post your letters in chat when you're finished with them? This, since there are only two students, and that way I can correct anything you write. I can easily correct it. Um, so if we could do 15 or 20 minutes of uh, quiet writing, and we can try another letter. And it's your choice. Congratulations or a letter to a friend. Let me write another um, letter. Just give me the, yeah. What do you think? Do you accept the challenge, ha, and tame? <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Just checking. All right, I'm going to write one more letter to my friend Carrie because she contacted me today on Facebook. And so... Brendan, yes. Uh, could, could you please, uh, send a template in yellow group? Can you send a what is it? Uh, the letter. Oh, the, put it in a PDF. Is that okay? And put it in yellow. Yeah. Okay. Let me do that right now. Thanks for reminding me. Um, I'll uh, get this here. I was just writing the letter to my friend, so I'll just put that one away. And then this file goes to export as PDF. And there we go. And we'll call it friendly letter, uh, lesson 10. And uh, we'll call it PDF two because they have an original PDF that, okay. And that should work. And we'll put this one here into Friday night at 1030 and we'll go here. Okay, and let's get it to load the 2.85 million megabytes. Okay, here's tonight's lesson on friendly letters. Thanks for reminding me too, Ha, because um, then the other students who can't come tonight can enjoy this lesson also. Okay, and then I'll add to my original letter.
I see you have a nice message from golf. <laughs> All right. Dear teacher, golf. I have just come back home. All right. All right, golf leather. Hello, golf. All right, so golf is going to join us, everyone. Maybe she's here now. And uh, Trang Ta came back. And uh, let's see. I'll explain to them when they come. Uh, hello, teacher. Who is TZ? <laughs> All right, TZ, mutual group. I don't know who that is. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here's golf. <laughs> golf, I like that avatar. <laughs> it's funny. Yes, hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm so sorry great. for being late. That's all right. You just came home, yes. you said. Yeah, so sorry. Yeah. Oh, we're just yeah, I still remember the last time I confirmed that I enjoyed the lesson, but I go back a little bit late to my uh, home. Yeah. yeah. So Today sorry. We're doing, um, we're doing just a kind of a easygoing lesson on writing a letter to a friend or a family person you haven't yeah. seen in a while and saying hello to them. Let me show you on the share screen what we worked on so far. Yeah. So I have that. just looked on the channel you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's what it looks like, Gulf. Um, this was uh, a letter to a friend named Phil. And uh, it has, you know, it has this color. We have the greetings, the opening, an update in your letter. Yes. Ask a question. Memories of your friend. Uh, plans together. And the closing yeah. is a nice ending. So then I did that mm. for my friend, Phil. Mm. I wish I had a picture of Phil. He's, he's bald, but he has a beard. He's a funny guy. Um, but I can't get WhatsApp on my desktop, so I can't get a picture of Phil. He was a really good teacher. He has a very nice accent, his speaking accent. It's a real uh, Southern England accent. It's, it's mm -hmm. very good for communication. Um, I kind of envy his speaking style. It's very, it has like melody in it. It almost sounds like he's singing. <laughs> yeah. So Phil is now working for a British university in Baghdad in Iraq. But the thing I noticed about Phil is he wants to make more money for his family. So he picks dangerous English teaching work in places like Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya. And everywhere he's been, Gulf, like violence starts. He has bad luck. So I worry about my friend Phil. Yeah. Um, I, I think he does it because the money is more than usual. Um, by working in Afghanistan, his salary was really high, but he would hear gunfire and things like that. And, um, but he says every place he's lived in, if it's Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Afghanistan, or Libya, he said the people are always friendly, even though there is violence. Mm. So I thought that was a nice Thing to say you know that no matter where he goes the people are actually really kind um it's just the government has problems fighting other groups who want to take power uh, so it look like uh no pain no gain so i don't know how to say yeah, no English. pain no gain that's a good point so in, <laughs> so in uh, in france we have a sentence that uh, if people don't uh, want to be in the rich so yeah. risk, they have yeah. nothing. Mm. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, um, and so how about? Yeah. How long did you live? Did you live in France before you returned to Vietnam? Uh, so in fact, so I have many mission in French, mis mis business mission, and I studied there about nearly two years for master. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> There's a question for you, golf. Did you get used to the French lifestyle? You know. Mm, gets used to that mean? Uh, um, it becomes familiar. It feels comfortable. It feels good. Mm, yeah yeah yes i love it oh i don't know how do you spell that boulanger right Bo Bo boulangerie oh boulangerie that's the um, right. the the great bread shops uh, boulangerie yeah mm. boulangerie. i have to spell that i'm disappointed <laughs> i can say it but i can't uh, boulangerie yeah. so <laughs> croissant yeah is that right? You know, because um, Vietnam has that shared history, for better or worse. Then, yeah. Uh, you know, I always, I'm, I'm always sensitive in how I say that, right? Um, and, so I think uh, the food is really good. The fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the so, fine dining, I, I love the fine dining, and I love wife. Wife. Okay, you did get used yeah. to it. <laughs> Fine yes <laughs> yeah very well well cooked and also very well de decorate i love it yeah now yes. did you eat, did you eat this one dish that british people and americans say they don't want to eat this ah swaga. yeah what is that vietnamese Lan Mung. do they still yeah. eat that in vietnam because of the french influence so in fact we imported we imported oh, from France and it is yeah. some five or four star hotels so we have. But it's also yeah. still very it's still, uh, expensive a little bit. Yeah. 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 Do you think it's I've tried it at Japanese wedding parties. Do you think this is good to eat or do you think it's mean to the goose? <laughs> uh so at the moment, even in France also they have um how to say uh squirrel. So yeah. many people they protest they the again yeah. about eating this because they want uh, to protect also the goose. Yeah, I mean they force mm. feed the goose until he dies, right? It's pretty. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but it's so delicious. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's like yeah. pure butter fat. You know? mm. I I think we do not eat much though so in the morning a little bit or when we have, yeah eat it's like a fun. Eat like a far, uh, how do you say, a cold cut, right? Yeah, a cold Some cut. Some kind of cold, cold cut, yeah. Expensive cold cut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Japanese still love it. Every wedding I go to, they have a foie gras plate. Mm. You get one little piece, but, you know, it feels good to eat it. Mm. Um, so Golf, were you, I'm sorry, were you here last week for the lesson? Yes, so the, the last time I have been with you, but okay, uh, because, so. yeah, only two people, you told me that we're going to uh, uh, stop and we work for today. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad you could all come back. That's why I asked. Yeah. Um, mm. I, I'm laughing because Ha was in our Saturday night class and the students were describing seafood from uh, Na Trang. Am I spelling golf? <laughs> Is that right? Na Trang? I don't know if I got that spelling right. Na Trang. And um, the students were all laughing because this the Google translator did not correctly translate it, right? Um, what is the famous seafood from Na Trang? Do you remember? Let me see. Nha Trang seafood. Uh, okay. Let me uh, let me put this in the share screen here. So the Nha Trang seafood. Hai San Nha Trang. Is that right? How is that okay for uh, Nha Trang seafood? 
Okay, let me go here. So teacher, Nha Trang, so this is the name of a province in Vietnam. Yeah. But there yeah, was a... yeah. What's the special seafood though? Do you know its name? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you put the wrong one here. Um, the special seafood in Nha Trang. Um, we had a choice here. We did this one. I think we did mussels contrai or mm. um, scallops. Conso. Ah, that's it. Scallops. I think there were scallops. But I don't know. And then there was one more choice. It was... Um, Escargot. Maybe escargot. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, escargot. They have very well. See, I, that's what I find really interesting that these words like boulanger and escargot, they stayed in the Vietnamese language because the French were there for 75 years, right? Yeah. Um, still got those. By the way, you know that the, the amount of time the French were there, it's exactly the same amount of time, almost the same, that the um, Japanese were in Taiwan. And so when I lived in Taiwan, I could still see all the Japanese influences on Taiwanese society. So I, I wonder if there are still French influences on Vietnam? Yes, I think they influenced a lot because at that moment, so they, uh, so they, um, how to say, so, they send many, many friend people there and they work like uh, in the administrator and yeah. they give also, they uh, they build also the school. They teach friends. So, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you that question. When you were in Paris and you wanted to just eat some Vietnamese food again because you missed it, could you find either expensive restaurants or cheap restaurants with good Vietnamese food? Mm, so in in general in Paris they have a district where uh fifteen, uh third, thirteen thirteen, yeah. uh district where we can find every Asian food. So okay. this is the Vietnamese people and also Chinese people. They they cook, oh. and it yeah. So it's not really really expensive because when I go in France, so I got a scholarship, so. Yeah, I don't make the saving. I try to enjoy my study, enjoy the life, and also I travel yeah. in other country, other country nearby. So yeah. I visit eleven country at that moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I love Europe. You can visit eleven countries. Yeah, fly, flying around my room. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. when I go back for, to Vietnam, I still have only fifty euro. Oh, fifty uh, only. Many 50 many. Euro left. Yeah, many yeah. friends of mine, so they can save, uh, they have a saving for the future. Uh, but I think so. I just take the chance and I am um, this opportunity to travel around. Yeah, yeah, I love Western Europe, you know, places like Denmark and France and uh, Switzerland. Yeah. Spain. Yeah. yeah. And so if we visit Paris or even for France, so it takes many, many days, I mm. think. Yeah two months or more than two or three months so to discover the beauty yes yeah. of Paris and also other provinces yeah my mother they have many, mother, many know, they, museum oh yeah the, uh, just the museums you can spend all day in museums I, yeah so in Louvre so we need two or three days yeah, yeah more, really more than that it's really big and they have also many museums so Musée d'Orsay or each kind of product, they have also a museum. Yeah. That's why I like the British Museum because, you know, the British took treasures from all over the world. Sometimes they yeah. paid for them. Sometimes they just took them, which is bad. But they're <laughs> <laughs> interesting yeah. treasures, you know, the Egyptian mummies and things like that. Yeah. Uh, love it. Yeah. Mm. Um. Did you, when you were in Paris, did you miss Vietnamese food? Like you just want to get a really good bowl of pho so you can go to a Vietnamese restaurant, enjoy good pho? 
Yeah, yes, we have we can find it in um in Paris. Yeah. And uh, so I stay also one year in the south of uh France in Nice, uh, Côte d'Azur. Uh, yeah. And there they have also Vietnamese uh Vietnamese restaurant. Hmm. Yeah. And so you know that word authentic. It's really authentic. No, not really. Not oh, no, really the is. same. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm. But I think it's okay. It's okay at that moment. <laughs> uh, ah. Yeah. So the quality is okay. Uh, yes. Way, it's passable. Do you know this one, Gulf? I wrote it in the chat. It's passable. Do you know passable? Yeah, understood. So, but, uh, yeah, so passable. So this is the French word. Passable. Oh, is it? Passable. Yeah. Okay. Passable. That means uh, you can, uh, it is uh, acceptable. It is okay. It's yeah. not really good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. I didn't know that. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. See, because I'm in Japan, you know, we always try to look for a really good hamburger. And so I just uh. make the hamburgers myself using Australian beef. Um, mm. you know, it's, it's a little bit better. It's authentic because I'm an American guy making them. Um, yeah. So they're, they're good. I enjoy them using recipes from Google. Mm. Um, and so even for me, sometimes when I go in France, so I make some, I made some Vietnamese food and I invite my friend and uh, yeah, to come, yeah. to enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And I love also Japanese food. Ah. I think, I, I don't know, but I think it's not really heavy, the yeah. Japanese food. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's, it's lighter. Yeah. Mm. It's funny you say that because I, you know, that's what I ate for dinner tonight, Japanese food. <laughs> so... Is this okay? Yeah. It good? Yeah. yeah. But in great. Vietnam, so Japanese food is still very uh, it's still expensive oh, in okay. comparison with the the salary, the rep, uh, the salary and revenue of the people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wonder, um, Golf, if I have some rich students because these uh, students write in their homework assignments, oh, my family took me to a great Japanese place for dinner <laughs> last night. You know? yeah. <laughs> wow. Was it your birthday? No, we just wanted to get outside the house. So yeah, maybe. because it's some restaurant is expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So when we have an event in the family, we went out because the de decoration of the yeah. restaurant uh -huh. is a little bit different. Uh -huh. It's not noisy. Uh -huh. We think that it's a little bit private. And also, uh -huh. so some, some restaurant, the food is uh, fresh. Yeah. And good, yeah. The let me, um, different, yeah. Let me show you some examples of the mm. uh, Japanese food. Um, so, I mean, of course, the sushi. Mm. Uh, the noodles are kind of like pho, I guess. It's ramen with beef. Mm. And, uh, a lot of sushi, a lot of sushi. Almost yeah. all sushi here. Uh, this one's nice. That's a uh, oden mm. uh, winter food. Um, it's really cold in winter, so you have eggs from the quail are smaller than uh, chicken eggs. Mm. Uh, you know quail eggs, right? Do you, do people eat a lot of these in Vietnam? Quail eggs, mm. um, these little ones. Yeah, the small one. Small ones, yeah. Yeah. So I love them. They're just so small and tender. I hope this <laughs> isn't making everyone hungry, but yeah, there's the big one and the little one. Yeah. Yeah. They're wonderful. Um, there's one Japanese one. Have you tried this one golf called Niku Jaga? Mm. This is a really crazy history, Niku Jaga. It's, um, this is a good typical Niku Jaga. It's onions, carrots, green beans, mm. potatoes, and uh, beef. And yeah. the, the Japanese got this recipe from the Dutch because oh. when Japan created a really big ship, um, yeah. In 1870, they went to around the world, but half of the young sailors died because their nutrition was really bad. Wow. So the Japanese asked all the Europeans and American at their embassies in Tokyo, could you give us a recipe that your sailors use? So the Dutch said, yeah, this comes from Indonesia. It's called Niku Jaga. We put uh -huh. potatoes, you know, and so the Japanese added soy sauce to this. And yeah. their sailors didn't get sick anymore because they can see they mm. can get good vitamins from this dish. Um, but that one's yeah. really nicely high quality. Yeah. Um, 
Do you, in, in the major Jap, um, Vietnamese city, do you have the yakitori restaurants? Do you know um, the grilled stick food like this? The yakitori? But uh, yes, we have. But in general, when we went to the Japanese, so sometimes we, in general, we eat the raw fish. Okay, you're sushi people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, uh, do they make really good sushi in Vietnam? Because you have good seafood. So it depends on the restaurant as well. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. This, sometimes mm -hmm. people describe this as button sushi, like I'm wearing buttons on my shirt. They call it mm -hmm. button sushi. But um, this is good because the green wasabi here, this is the really natural stuff. Because I yeah. know when the wasabi comes apart like that in small pieces, it means it's high quality. Um, and then this is fresh ginger, which is really wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. For most houses, the wasabi can be really expensive. So people have two wasabi do they sell this in the supermarkets in the japanese section they say it's fake wasabi um so, it looks like that. so why is this uh, is this expensive in in japan the uh, no this one is really cheap um because yeah. this is real wasabi that's expensive right but the fake wasabi is not like if you look um if you look at the um fake wasabi um let's see uh it's in a tube um yeah you can see this at the grocery store this is in the tube this is not real wasabi they take a hot uh chinese radish and they put green yeah food. yeah the the japanese one it's really hot mm. yeah that's why i really like the real wasabi um yeah and uh so 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 i love uh sashimi yeah. Oh, sashimi is <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Gulf, have you tried the um, the famous fugu sashimi? Yeah. So in general, in Vietnam, they make the the they mix different thing like that. Yeah. Okay. Do you know this one though? This one is the famous fugu sashimi. It's beautiful. I've only eaten this twice. Ah, uh, one kind, of, one kind of fish, right? Yeah, it's the poison fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you but have in Vietnam, not much, not much people eat it. Yeah, they, people are afraid of it. Like my American yeah. friends say, you actually ate that? Can't you get poison? But you have to have a special license to prepare it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, because uh, so before I know, some people, they they were, they would die because of this kind of fish because yeah. they had some, something small near to the... I don't know how to say in English, the word. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Poison, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so you have to have a special license to prepare this um, because he can be, you know, he, the, it's really powerful poison. I'm sure yeah. like Japanese assassins use it or something. So. But it is really delicious with the fresh uh, lime. You, um. you squeeze it. I recommend trying it, but um, you just so, have to make sure. <laughs> can we say that this is a snake head fish biller? Biller. Oh, biller. I would probably just say fugu. Um, even Americans understand fugu now. You could say puffer fish. Puffer is okay too. Puffer fish. Mm. Um, there's the puffer fish, all different kinds of puffer fish. Um, so it's the Japan puffer fish, is the fugu. Um, I'm not sure if they're all poison. But the Japanese one is, yeah, um, the fugu. Um, but yeah, it's best if you know the person who prepares it has a license. Once every couple of years, maybe a fisherman catches one, and then his grandmother makes it for the whole family, and then people get really sick or die because she didn't prepare it right. She doesn't have a license for taking out the um, the poison part. And so, so I I said Google. So it said that snake head fish beaver beaver. Yeah. Mm. Can you eat those in Vietnam? Huh? In Vietnam, do you eat the snake head fish? Uh yeah. Very so I think some some reason in Vietnam they eat it. 
Yeah, yeah. in the super, in the market, I saw also. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> it's a strange mm -hmm. fish. Um, here uh. it is in America. Um, this is the snakehead map. Um, northern snakeheads. Oh, there's my hometown. Chicago has likely climate. Don't quite understand what this map is, but where are they found? Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. How do they, the spread of exotic animals, let's see if they went to Vietnam. Uh, how, you know, how do they came to America? Oh, yeah, I know this one, Gulf. This one became really controversial because <laughs> this is, um, Gulf, this is the fish that you can pull out like if it's in a pond here, it can actually walk across. Yeah. yeah. Is that an environmental problem in Vietnam? So at the moment, so with the, the I think many people, they think about the economy first, the money, the, the, the yeah. So the um, environment, uh, environment. So, yeah. yeah. So we have campaign, but uh. because many in the, I think, so this is the fact, huh? I uh, think in the countryside, many people, they have very difficulty. So uh, sometimes they don't come, at the moment, don't care much uh, in, uh, for the environmental issue. Uh, Maybe so in the future, or even very big real estate investor, they forgot even because of the benefits of yeah. the profits. So they uh, forgot also the environment, they, they left behind. Yeah. the environmental issue yeah wow it's mm. just so big um yeah doesn't it, doesn't it eat a lot of other fish so it's an environmental problem no no it don't uh, don't cause any problem with us at the uh, moment so the problem it's not about the fish or uh, yes yeah, so the seafood uh, at the moment so in vietnam i think so destroy the forest uh -huh. yeah to clear in the land yeah the mango something yeah. like that he mm. just eats everything right because it's so big it has to eat everything mm. i think most of these are asian fishermen you know who are catching these in thailand yeah. and Vietnam. because you know all the pictures the really beautiful big ones are guys from asia mm. uh, yeah okay how oh, it's, it's a really beautiful cool. fish though look at yeah. that yeah. big fish Oh, I know how these got into the American system. Somebody had these in a tank, a fish tank in a restaurant, and they just put them in their back pond. It was a Chinese restaurant. That's right. And yeah. the population just exploded so quickly because it really liked the American river system. So, mm. yeah, that's why it's it's all over here. Um, and then there was its original range here. Yeah, It really big. So in Vietnam, it's small. It's the fish. This oh. kind of fish is small. Yeah. Are they delicious to eat? I mean, do people really like them? Mm, I don't know. For me, I don't like this kind of fish. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, like fish. I like seafood. I don't like fish. Fish is like yeah, too strong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't like this kind of fish as uh, well. Uh, yeah. So they call it an invasive species. Uh, means that it invaded these uh, environments. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, check with everybody. Uh, yeah. The basic writing from Ha and Tane. Hey, Tane, are you still there? I'm sorry we started to talk about fish and Japanese food. And I know it was a long <laughs> day for her. I'm sorry, Tane. Golf and I started to talk about delicious seafood. And <laughs> would you like to read yours, Tane? Uh, yeah. Okay. So. My writing is yeah, yeah it is how oh, yeah. How are you doing? I hope this email finds you well. I'm doing well and still working in Hanoi. I'm so happy to see your photos with your family updates on Facebook. It makes me miss you and your warm past of past a lot. I'm working as a psychologist and I work with students from primary school to high school. I could talk and look after their mental health and see them better day by day. This makes me feel my job is more meaningful. How about you? Do you have any plans for summer? Because I hope I can see you in Hanoi if you travel for summer holidays. 
uh, I totally missed the last time we had dinner together at your cozy house with your parents and lovely children. Anyway, thank you for keeping in touch the last three years. I miss you and I hope we can have a reunion maybe in Hanoi. Enjoy your time with your family and I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Bad wishes. Oh, it's perfect. I really like it. Um, the, I just saw one small grammar, Tane. I mean, it's a wonderful mm -hmm. letter. Uh, where was it, Tane? I hope this email finds you. I'm doing well. I'm so happy to see. This is all very good, very good, very good. Uh, nah, it's fine, Tane. There's nothing wrong here. <laughs> oh, uh, I miss your warm hugs a lot. You could just say a lot, but there's a lot of S's there. So if you want, Tane. Without you can, S. Yeah, just say a lot. I miss your hugs a lot. And that was the only mistake, so that's amazing. I, I, I almost feel bad telling you there was just one small mistake because it's a perfect letter, right? Let when, me go through. Yeah, when when you use a lot with F and without well, you can use it this way. You can say, um, just casually, you can say to a friend, I miss you lots. That's okay, that's an affectionate way. You can say, oh, I miss you lots. Ah, okay, okay. And you see that a lot, you know, it's cute in um, social mm -hmm. media. But if you were writing in school, you'd say, oh, I miss you a lot. That would be good. I miss your warm hugs a lot. All right. Very good. And so, I, uh, Tane, of course, I won't start talking about school psychology again. <laughs> <laughs> you know my joke. I love talking about school psychology because uh, yeah. 25 years ago, I did that for two years. I had to study it as part of an education master's program. And I worked uh, my professor was very strict she made me work very hard but she was like one of the top uh school psychologists in all of chicago she was kind of nationally famous uh miss roth i loved learning from her and she gave me a lot of useful advice because i was working with one student um do you know this one tane it's called inclusion in assistant in the american system inclusion assistant it's a good word to learn what? if you have to go. Um, what, it's really awesome. strange. In um, 1990, the Americans passed, uh, the American government passed the Americans with Disabilities Act. And, and what that was is the government said businesses and schools have to create a special ramp for students in wheelchairs, people in wheelchairs, people who need help with doors opening. Mm -hmm. And then America is a country of lawyers, you know, they just, lawyers always ask the government to extend the rights, you know, it's our sort of socialist system. And the lawyer said, what about students at school who need help with mental problems? Could you give them an assistant? And then the government uh, said, you're right. The Supreme Court said, yeah, you're right. We, we have to include a, a helper for each student who really needs help. So school districts receive government money from the national and state governments. And so it's a really good full-time job if you're a graduate student. In the daytime, you work for um, a standard eight o'clock in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon uh, uh, as a helping a student. So I was taking care of just one boy who had really bad hyperactive disorder. It's not an easy job, but... Um, at the same time, I was doing a master's degree in education. So this specialist always gave me really useful information on how to help this boy. Um, and I, I enjoyed, I did it for about five months, but then I switched back to teaching English because that's when I first started to work with students from Vietnam and Mexico. And that was easier for me because um, I liked working with adults more at that time. Yeah. How, many, how many school psychologists for it? School oh, in there should be one for each school. Okay. So the the guy and was for really how nice many students? Um, that was a really rich school. Tane, you know, it had a lot of <laughs> local government money because the houses were so expensive. Um, yeah. so they had uh for that primary school, there were only about two hundred and fifty or two hundred seventy five students, and there was uh one. PhD guy who was in charge of the middle school at ages 12 to 14, but also the mm -hmm. primary school. He was a very nice guy to work for. Um, so, um, yeah, 
they were they really supported each other as a team. Um, I, I really admired them. They taught me so much. I'm going to check how you just put it in Word. I'm going to say download completed. And so let's see if Haas thing came we up here. Check the final version uh, because Absolutely. the first one. Here we go. Hey, thanks for putting it in Word because this is what I do most of my proofreading in, huh? And uh, all right, so we're going to open Haas thing and I'm going to do the thing. Ha, you don't mind if I edit it right here in class? Uh, not edit because, yeah. Okay. Dear because, Jana. Uh, this, yeah. Is it Jana? Jana? Yeah, Jana. Dear Jana. I read I, it. Yeah. Can you read it? Okay. Uh, dear Jana, I hope this email, this letter find you well in the link. The link is a place in uh, Czech Republic. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm delighted when receiving the news that you will have a business trip to Ho Chi Minh City in August. Uh, in fact, the weather in Ho Chi Minh City is able to more comfortable at a time and you will enjoy that. I will send you the details uh, plan below. Uh, I will pick up you in the airport and please give me the information of your flight after booking. The first day, you will be a chairman of two finance sections of conference. Impacting on uh, 8 30 a.m. and 2 p.m. After that, we will have a warm dinner with the other chairman and a uh, keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. The second day in the morning, uh, 9 a.m., you have a presentation talking about small and medium enterprises in Czechia. And we have a gala dinner at 6 p.m. The next two days, we will have a Mekong Delta tour to enjoy indigenous culture, custom, and cuisine. And the final day, we could go to the Bentan market to buy different souvenirs for your children and friends. In case of you want to explore various places in Ho Chi Minh City, such as uh, Ho Chi Minh Museum or Wari Remnant. Museum or Notre Dame Church, we will we could go to there. If you have any chance, please tell me. We will edit and revise it, uh, and revise it. Take care and be safe, Jenna. Can't wait to see you again. Best regards. Yeah. So for for Tain and Ha, thank you. You did the assignment. Nice, both of you. That's really wonderful. And again, Ha, I don't see many corrections here. It's good enough. It's actually really nice. I like how you use this expression, gala dinner. It's a little old fashioned, but it's really sincere. It's really sweet. I like it. So I'm glad you put that in there. Um, Czech, Czechia, is that Czechoslovak, uh, Czech, Czech Republic? Yeah. Uh, okay, so because, you can say. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can. So you could say uh, maybe Czech Republic. Czech Republic, I guess. Yeah, it's interesting because my friend just came back. He's from Czech Republic too, and now he's living in Hiroshima again. So they're nice mm -hmm. people, the Czech people. They like to eat and drink. Uh, ha. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm glad you're taking him for some dinners and things like that. Ha ha. By the way, the Mekong uh, Delta tour to enjoy the culture, custom, and cuisines. Aha, can I show you this one? I saw this on a program by a famous American chef named Tony Bourdine. He died when he was 63 years old, but he loved Vietnam. And his French co-chef used to come and they used to um, duck baked in mud on the Mekong Delta. Let's see if I can find this here. They um, went to a traditional village on the Mekong and they yeah, here it is. Um, I found it. Um, do you know about this Mekong baking of the duck? This television show made this really famous. So I think a lot of tourists want to go and try the Mekong baked duck. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so they... It make me starving. <laughs> because it's so good? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's clay, right? It's clay and then leaves and then the duck yeah that looks so good uh let's see where did they 
uh, put the, the duck in the mud. This is, shows the actual fire. So there's a, have you tried this before, Ha, in the indigenous villages? Yeah, um, this is not only in Mekong Delta, we have uh, a lot of uh, province, we have this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in the Mekong Delta, we have a special, uh, that is uh, the market in the river. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the chef from America and his French chef friend, who they both knew so much about Vietnam, they were in one of these boats and they pulled up and they got the morning French bread, the croissant, and they also mm. got really delicious, strong coffee. And uh, I would love to try that Vietnamese strong coffee as well. You can mm. buy it from one of these boats. They have an old fashioned coffee maker. And the chef said, oh my gosh, this coffee is so delicious but it's really, really strong to wake up in the morning, right? All right? So there are the melons. By the way, in Vietnam, do people enjoy eating this at the uh, holiday time? Um, this is so funny because in Singapore, they love to eat this, but the government says, please don't bring it into the hotels. Um, the durian? Durian, I know. Yeah. Do you like this hot and tain and uh, golf and trong ta? It's amazing. Oh, it is amazing. Okay. Now, <laughs> do, do they eat a lot of this in Vietnam? Yeah, this is the uh, season of durian. Oh, it is. Okay. Now. No, yeah. No. Do the but hotels... It, the, the, the different, it's the different in the, uh, in, the, in the middle. I mean, in the highland uh -huh. uh, and in the, on the um, east south. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Now, um, does the government or the hotel during the Tet holidays in February, do the hotel say, please don't bring them because they smell bad <laughs> into the hotel room? Because Singapore has those signs, please do not bring durian into your hotel room. <laughs> uh, can, can, can you eat durian? I've never tried it, huh? Um, they were selling this in a Japanese uh, department store in the, in the supermarket in the basement. But each one was like 10,000 yen, which was really expensive for a durian. So I still yeah. have to try this. Yeah. Um, it's so uh, expensive in maybe in Japan, uh, in uh, Malaysia. Yeah. If you want to a uh, cheaper price, uh, you could uh, buy a air ticket to Vietnam and yeah. enjoy in this summer. Yeah, I really want to go to Vietnam. <laughs> but the students, they tell me these stories about how hot it is. And I, I become nervous to go there in summer, you know. But that's probably the best time for me to travel in summer. Um, these are kind of fun um, because Americans began to really like lychee um, because the uh, Chinese restaurants have lychee after really good seafood or spicy food, they yeah. eat lychee. Like, Did they, are these really popular in Vietnam too? Yeah, it's uh, very popular in the north of Vietnam. Uh, yeah, I love these. I think it's just mm. such a great taste, yeah. And really good after spicy food, you know, to have some lychee. Yeah. 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 Uh, and in the south, we have the long and the same with uh, lychee. Lychee, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. Is it called mogu mogu lychee? No, no, no. Uh, longan. longan. Yeah. Longan. Yeah. How do you spell longan? Uh, L, L O N, G, A N. Longan yeah. fruit. Okay. Let's yeah. See what the longan is. Oh wow! Yeah, those are beautiful lychees. Yeah. I think I had these in Singapore. Oh my gosh, those look so good. <laughs> now is it making you hungry again? Ha. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not really hungry. Uh, it's starving. Starving. <laughs> and this is, this one is just unbelievably delicious. I love the star fruit. Um, to me, it tastes like really good bubble gum. Uh, the star fruit. Yes, uh, star fruit. It's just so delicious. I love star fruit, right? 
Um, it uh, include the sour and sweet flavor. Yeah. All like, mixed, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that is just such a great fruit. And then the so, so, Miss Howe, we have another kind of food, so mangoustong in French. I don't know, what mangoustong. Okay, let, let me talk. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, mangoustong. Huh? Mangoustong. Oh, mango steam, yeah, mango steam, yeah. Mm, yeah, this one was really popular. Mango. In, uh, the um, the dragon fruit was really popular in Taiwan. Uh, mango steam, yeah. There's mango steam fruit. Huh? Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, this oh, one. Yummy. Really mm. Oh yummy. Yummy, yummy. So yummy. this is a, this is the right season for this. Oh, is it? Yeah, What's this called? is. Yeah. Durian uh, and this. Chom chom So I don't know. Uh, chom chom. Uh, let me think. I yeah. yeah, another another rest one near to the dragon steam, something like that. Yeah, this one. I don't know how to say in English. Is it uh, the dragon's fruit? No, no. It's not ah, no. Uh, rambutan. 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 Uh, rambutan. Yeah, yeah. rambutan. See, just pure rambutans. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a tropical country. So the fruits very delicious. Mango, pineapple. This is uh, the right season. Oh yeah. Uh, it looks all looks so delicious and all good for you. All healthy too. All very good. It's okay, sweet. ready? Hey golf, here's your French. It's such an easy question, right? But yeah. I'll give it to you. And so there it is. And uh, mm. so remember how to say it in French? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, framboise? Framboise. Mm. Yeah, framboise. framboise. Yeah. It's a funny name, framboise. Yeah. What do they so call make, it? So they make the jam with that. Yeah. So we, we have this kind. Yeah. Huh? From, do they um call it framboise in Vietnamese? So this is like um uh how do you say in English? Like, raspberry? No, yeah. raspberry. Raspberry, yeah, raspberry. Yeah, raspberry. So I wonder what you know what they call that. Let me, let yeah, me raspberry. Know. It is raspberry. So in, in English to Vietnamese, raspberry is is that right? Those are, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are, that's really cool. All right. Well, um, so we have two writing samples. It's okay just to chat tonight. I'll, I'll thank Tane and Ha for your hard work. Trong Ta was really sleepy. I don't know if Trong Ta went to sleep or not. It's, <laughs> it's fine if she wants to sleep. She said, I worked so hard today, teacher, but she did come back. So I'm happy about that. Um, so since you are such great students and you have good relations with Dr. Duke, if you want to design a course, you can contact her and say, I'd be interested in this kind of course. Can Brendan teach it? And another two of my friends are going to become teachers too. And we're mm. completely flexible for adult classes. It might be kind of nice if you wanted to um, think of ideas of a course you would like to do. I think you really enjoyed the business English course um, for yeah. writing. And so if you can think of any other topic that you would like to do, like, Tane, we could do school psychology in English. No, I'm just joking. You <laughs> so, teacher, I really want to learn about public speaking. Okay. Yeah, and also negotiation. Oh, very nice. Yeah, public speaking negotiation. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to definitely present these to Dr. Duke. Yeah. Um, you know, she has a strong history of debate and presentation for uh, teenagers. Because, yeah. yeah. So we want to design that for adults. Sounds yeah. good to me. I like it. And so at the moment, so do you have any class regarding the uh, IL or SAT? S -A -T? Well, yeah, the IELTS, you know, the British Council does the IELTS. I do the writing IELTS for um, this organization which the organizations change, I else, the organizations changing to that name, um, k is becoming the umbrella publishing and education. 
Um, so I do the IELTS. Um, let me show you a sample from the other students so you can see the work I do in the IELTS. Uh, let me go back to here. And the students submit their IELTS. So it's okay to show you this because uh, you're so wonderful. You give, the, you give the writing class, right? Yeah, this one is just kind of a private tutorial. You know, it's like a tutoring system. And so yeah. the, you get a topic and then um, I check the uh, writing. Um, let me see, where is it? Where is my... Uh... Because, because people tell me that for oh, have the high score. So in general, they have a technique, right? Yeah. For drawing, for speaking. Uh... So they do the writing with me. Um, I'm happy to teach it because they the students try really hard. This one um, student is maybe a college professor because his writing, or I'm not sure if it's male or female, but the uh, writing is just perfect. Um, and I'm trying to find, I have it in a folder. Let me quickly show you that uh, if I can find it. I'll do that and save. And if I can get through these files, uh, my IELTS files are Word files. And I'll show you Mr. Long what his writing looks like. And it should be okay to share this. It's not personal, it's just topic writing, you know. Um, so let's see where I am. Share screen and we'll look at Long to show you what this looks like. Um, 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 um. Yeah, there it is. Okay, it's Microsoft corrected. So what the IELTS writing looks like is this, you get a topic like number one was, uh, the world has many towns and cities constructed in previous centuries that were more suitable and livable for people in those times than they are now. What problem will this cause? And what can be done to solve these problems? So this was the topic for March 2nd, 2024. And then you just write a one page response. And then I give my comments and I do all my um, corrections here. So it starts with an introduction, paragraph one, paragraph two and then the conclusion. Um, but to answer your question, golf, this can also be used very nicely in public speaking if you were to speak this IELTS things. Um, his introduction says, it is the case that numerous towns and cities in the world. When I first read this, um, I said, good introduction, but actually Long became much better. His, his work just became really um, unbelievably good to the point there were no corrections in his work and a uh, very intelligent man i think it's a man long is a, a man i'm not sure i just know the name long so uh, and then if it's a man if, in general yeah it is a man in general yeah because i could yeah. it's interesting golf because i could tell by his writing tone that he was a man <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> just, okay. oh, man's writing yeah um so then I get back to him. I say, this is good. This is a good topic. The IELTS topics from the British Council um, around the world, they're actually really good topics. You know, if I go back to this, uh, world has many cities and towns with old architecture. And so uh, what problems will this cause if people are living in older buildings in Italy and France or Vietnam? Should the government take down the old, you know, and build new safe places? So then you argue it. Usually um, you do your introduction and then you support it. And then you also do the negative here and then your conclusion. So Long's conclusion, in conclusion, uh, implementing solutions, modern societies can enhance the desirability and sustainability of historic towns and cities, ensuring they remain vibrant and functional for future generations. So what Long was saying is he supports the government um, repairing old buildings in Vietnam uh, because they're really important cultural buildings. And it's a pretty cool standpoint. All right, so I will say goodbye to you, but remember you can always drop me messages in Yalo and then um, by all means help design a new course that's good for all of you. Does that sound like a good idea? Yes, thank you teacher, yeah. All right. So thank you very much. All of you yeah. are regular, you join the class till the very end. I was like, thank you to the students. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Todd. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, to us. <laughs> like golf. Send me messages. It's always okay. You can always ask me questions, okay? Thank you. When, when you go to Vietnam, so please let us know, okay? Definitely. So I'm going. 
I want yeah. to try that. I want to try that nyang tray. Uh, uh, how do you say nya traying seafood? I yeah. really want to try that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye bye. I'll miss you. Oh, bye bye, teacher. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye, teacher. Thank you.